Good morning. Dwayne here in Dry Creek Wrangler School. Um, so yes, I'm I'm sitting in the Suburban um, for this video. It's been time for me to make another one and I've been trying. This is my fifth attempt uh, to record a video. Uh, we had storms come through here in Bandera and now the wind has been just blowing for like three days now. And uh, so I finally got frustrated and came out here and we're gonna sit here in the truck, see how this works. Um, got a pipe today instead of a cigar cause I was outside trying to do stuff outside and cigars and wind don't mix. And uh, for those who are gonna ask, and I know folks are gonna ask, the tobacco in the pipe, I mix my own anymore. And this is my simplest mixture. You just, it's just lane one Q uh, and then uh, H. H. MacBaron Dark Fired Kentucky mixed uh, one of the Dark Fired Kentucky to uh, four of the Lane HQ. And the people really like the room note of the Lane, but to smoke, it's just mild and just kind of sweet and it's not very satisfying. So I mixed the Dark Fired Kentucky uh, and it brings it up kind of a little bit better for me. So anyhow, I had a fella um asked me in the comments the other day about a recommendation a reading literature recommendation and so we had a brief conversation and then i lost the thread for the life of me i can't find it i've been trying to answer him back and i thought you know what i've had other folks ask me and so i'll just do a video on it and maybe he'll see the video and get his answer there Don't really know why anybody be interested in my what I read, but we'll we'll do it, okay? Uh, I'm gonna tell you two things up front before we do. First off, a lot of these books are are gonna be kind of obscure. Um, they're not gonna be. You're not gonna have any Tom Clancy or or James Patterson or whatever on here. Uh, they're gonna be kind of obscure, some of them, and. Uh, the other thing is, is I did not, and I, I will not look them up, the author, the, the Library of Congress number, give a link where you can find these books. I've recommended things before, and folks have asked, how come you don't put a link so we can find that and buy it? And, uh, and it's just cowboy obstinacy. Uh, I'll cook you a meal, and I'll put it on a plate, and I'll set it in front of you. But I'll be hung for a sheep thief if I'm going to cut it up in little bites and spoon feed it to you. Okay? So I'll point you down a direction and then you decide do you want to go. And then however successful you are down that direction is going to depend on how committed you are and how much effort you put into it. Okay? All right. Reading recommendations. Well, the first one right off the bat, off the top, has to be the King James Version of the Bible. Now hold on. Uh, some of you folks don't just turn it off. This is not a religious discussion. It does not matter if you're not a person of faith. You cannot call yourself a reader. If you speak the English language and you read the English language, you cannot seriously call yourself a reader. If you have not or do not read the King James Version of the English Bible, it is the single most uh, influential English translation book in the English language ever, ever. Uh, it was translated by 70 of the most brilliant minds in England at the time. Um, and uh, it has been called the book of Job. The book of Job in the King James Bible has been called by the literary, the most beautiful piece of poetry bar none in the English language. Um, and you do not have to be a Christian. You do not have to be a person of faith uh, to appreciate the power and the beauty and the wisdom that's in that book. Uh, if you're not familiar with it and you don't know where to start, there's a lot of stuff in there. You know, it could really tangle you up if you go in and, and uh, but you can start in the book of Proverbs, which is just wisdom. It's just wisdom. 
Uh, you don't have to be a Christian to appreciate wisdom. And the book of Proverbs is a whole book just telling you, hey, if you do this, you, you're going to get in trouble. These are traps in life you're going to fall into. Uh, read the book of Ruth in the Old Testament. Just a beautiful, poetic, lyrical story, love story. Uh, read the book of Esther. Um, it, that's my first recommendation. The King James Version of the Bible, okay? Um, since we're talking about literature, we had a rule in my house while my kids were growing up. There was a hard and fast rule. There were no abridged books allowed in my house, none. Uh, when the kids went to the library and brought home uh, library books, uh, if they accidentally got an abridged book, they had to take it back. They weren't allowed to read it. Abridged, you know, for those if you don't understand what that means, it means you take a classic like Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain and some knobhead somewhere decides that that's just too, that's just too hard to read. And so they will come in and have the unmitigated gall to rewrite that book themselves and change the words enough to make it simpler. It's dumbing it down, okay? And so my rule my kids were, listen, this stuff is classics. They read Ivanhoe, The Black Arrow, you know, all of Sir Walter Scott stuff. Um, and uh, they read all that stuff as it was originally written. I said, these things are intelligent and they're classics for a reason. Um, and if you want to be smarter and more intelligent human being, you bring yourself up to the level of that which is better than you. Don't dumb the world down to your level. I feel the same way about the Bible. Uh, and I'm not talking theology here, okay? Um, that Bible, at the time of the English language and the translators, is magnificent. It's a magnificent piece of literature. And people say, well, it's too hard to understand. And my answer is gently, don't take that which is magnificent and bring it down to your level. You take yourself and you learn and you study and you grow yourself up to its level. Okay? So anyhow, enough of that. Didn't, didn't, didn't mean to get, don't want to get uh, too crusty there. Okay? Um, if you're interested in horses and mules and packing in the back country, there's a book by a man named Smoke Elser called Packing In with Horses and Mules. Best thing I ever, I've still got that book. Best book I ever got on the subject. I recommend that one. Um, um, if you're a person of faith, there's a little tiny book by a man named Ravi Zacharias called The Lotus and the Cross. Uh, if you're not a person of faith, but you're interested in studying different religions that book changed my life in that it introduced me to the outlook of discussing opposing views on anything from a state of gentleness politeness courtesy and grace it's an imaginary discussion between Jesus and Buddha over the future of a Thai, it's set in Bangkok, of a Thai prostitute who's dying of AIDS. And they're sitting there discussing her future. And, uh, and it, for me, it, it changed my whole, my whole life and my whole view on the Christianity side of things. That you can stand for what you believe, but you can do it from a courteous and gentle and understanding standpoint. The Lotus and the Cross, Ravi Zacharias. If you're looking for fiction, uh, anything by Elmer Kelton, okay? Um, the Man Who Rode Midnight and The Time It Never Rained, fantastic books. Um, if you're looking for like older Western stuff, you know, anything by Louis L'Amour. Uh, my two favorites of his are Conniger and Hondo. Uh, any of the Sackett series, you know, if, if that's, if that's kind of what you're looking for. Um, if you want Westerns that are a little bit more, um, highbrow, I don't know if highbrow is the right word, Zane Gray, uh, 
Riders of the Purple Sage. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, and uh, so I recommend that one. Uh, here's an obscure book. Uh, if you want real life biography of an adventure uh, that's way outside of your experience and your comfort zone, uh, there's a book called The Shadow of the Koyukuk. And I don't know how to spell that, Koyukuk. It's a river in Alaska. It's a biography of a man who was, his daddy was an Irish trapper and his mama was an Alaska native. Uh, and he was born up there at um, early 1900s. And uh, it's just his life. And it is just, that's back, that's men back in the day when men had the bark on. Uh, but you want adventure in the, in, in, in bush and, uh, and just bits of bush lore that are just there as a, a everyday part of life. Uh, I recommend that book. Um, I have the whole collection of books by Peter Hathaway Cap Capstick, Professional Hunter in Africa, Death in the Long Grass, Death in the Silent Places. Uh, really, really riveting books. Uh, you should read the classics. Everybody should read the classics. Um, you. Yes, I have read Ivanhoe twice. Um, I have read much of Shakespeare. I have read much of Charles Dickens. I've read all of James Fenimore Cooper. Uh, Nordoff and Hall, uh, that's Mutiny on the Bounty, uh, The Hurricane, Pitcairn's Island, um, The Brains and Muscle. And if you get a book that's kind of difficult to read, and like your leather stocking tales, James Fenimore Cooper, those books are hard to read. All right, they're 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 they can be a hard read. You you get what you work for, and it will expand your worldview. It will expand um, the, your uh, your intelligence if you actually read it. Um, Another book I've read like three times. I'm not even going to pretend to understand it. I don't understand it, but I, I've got enough out of it that it has become profitable to me. And that's The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Um, I've got two copies of it. And uh, that book really affected my horse training, believe it or not. Because from that book, I really solidified the idea of pick your battles, um, fight the battle in your head before you go fight the battle, and win the battle in your head before you go out. So from that book, I got the concept, and I got finally got the understanding. I have an issue with a horse, and I'm going to go out and deal with this horse. But I go through the whole process in my head before I ever go out there. What is the problem with the horse? This is the problem the, horses have, the horse has. What am I going to do about it? Well, I'm going to do this. And if I do this, what is the horse going to do? Well, the horse is probably going to do this if I do that. Well, if the horse does this, then what am I going to do? Well, this is how I will react to that. And, and I will go through the process in my head a lot of times. And then when I go out in the arena or I go out in the round pen or in the backyard or whatever with the horse, the battle has already been laid out before me. And so I'm not surprised. Yep, I knew he was going to do that, and he does it. And I'm prepared. This is what I'm going to do. And how is he going to react? He's going to react like this. Then what am I going to do? This is what I'm going to do. The other thing is, is you pick your own time and your own ground. Um, I've got a video on here about when not to work your horse. I got that from, got that concept was solidified by this book, The Art of War. I'm not going to work my horse today. Why? Because I'm not in a frame of mind that I'm going to win. I, I'll lose um, because I'm not in a good state of mind. The wind is blowing too much. Um, it's a mare and she's in heat and uh, it's not, it's like uh, Sam Houston in the Battle of San Jacinto, um, which is fitting being here in Texas. After the Alamo, um, uh, Santa Ana chased Houston all over that part of Texas trying to get him to fight. Houston would not fight him 
until Houston found the ground that he wanted and the time that he wanted, and then he fought and won the battle with a much, much smaller force. Um, and you, you get that from the book, from reading. Um, like I said, you know, they're, it's an unusual, eclectic group of books, and that's just scratching the surface. Um, the biography or the autobiography of Billy Dixon Billy Dixon, D-I-X-O-N. Uh, this is the guy at the Battle of Adobe Walls um, that made that incredible 15 or 1,700-yard shot. Uh, his life, his life was just phenomenal. And reading this book, these books of guys like this kind of gives us a different take on, on our life when we're out and uh, we can't get cell service and we think, that uh, we live in hard times uh, and we just kind of melt down and don't know what to do. And sometimes we go back and read about the lives of guys who did live in hard times and uh, not just physically the things that they did, how to handle it, but their approach and their attitude and their outlook through it. Um, it helps us grow. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, anything else that really stands out? Poetry, I know this comes as a shock. I love poetry. I love anything um, by uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I love Longfellow short poems. Uh, my favorite poem in the world is uh, The Day is Done. I read that again and again and again. Anything by Rudyard Kipling, you should read Kipling. Disney took and stupefied The Jungle Book and Ricky Ticky Tavi and those books into their little cartoon movies, you ought to actually read the actual book. Uh, I think if you haven't read it before and you read Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle Book, it'll blow your mind. Uh, and you'll just have less respect for Walt Disney, okay? The man who would be king, um, just, you should read Robinson Crusoe, you should read Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, whether you're a person of faith or not, uh, there's tremendous wisdom in those books. Uh, so that's just kind of a shotgun deal right there. Just, um, and you know, I don't know if it's going to do anybody in good or anybody's even interested, but uh, I thought I'd put it out and we would uh, just throw it out there and let the chips lie where they fall. Okay, so I hope you gain a little something out of this. Uh, click like if you did. Um, subscribe if you haven't. Click on that bell so you get notified and uh, share with somebody. And, uh, and we do have a Patreon account now. Uh, and if you're interested in that, that link will be in the description. It's Dry Creek Wrangler School over there on Patreon if you want to continue to support this channel and uh, help us put out more content. Uh, I've got, uh, somebody asked me this morning about spurs. And uh, when the wind dies down and things settle down around here, that, that's going to be one of the next ones. I have not forgotten about putting out a video on turning stirrups on a saddle. Y'all think I forgot that. I haven't. The problem I have is I don't have a saddle that needs the stirrups turned. Um, and, uh, and it's not something I want to just talk about. I want to physically do it and show you. And when I said I was going to make that video and I started getting set up to make it, and then I realized I, my saddles are all turned. And so I want to actually turn the stirrup leather and do that. But I haven't forgotten. It's still there, okay? Um, so anyhow, thank you. Continue to support this. As I've mentioned before, we're a community, okay? This is our channel. This video here in the comment section would be a tremendous uh, opportunity for you to put your list of books that you recommend, all right? No discussing religion. And by discussing, I mean arguing about, or politics, okay? I had to remind some folks here recently that keep it polite. I will not tolerate rudeness. I don't care how strong your faith is, and I don't care what your faith is. If Jesus wasn't rude, you don't be rude, okay? All right, we'll talk to you all later.